Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm happy to be here, and thank you for being so kind just before Christmas um, to be here with me. Um, I chose um, the title The Music Industry as Early Settler in Neuland. I guess you're all familiar with uh, the notion of Neuland. If not, maybe you search, um, you tried with the search engine and you'll find quite um, diverging answers to that. My name is Florian Drücke. I'm, as you said, a managing director of the Bundesverband Musikindustrie, um, which is the German representative of the label side. I'm a lawyer, um, copyright lawyer, and I'm trying to go forward with the presentation. I'm a lawyer, so you might say this is how it works with lawyers. So here I am. I'm born in 1975, so this gives you an idea where I'm placed in all the environment which I will show, show you later. Um, if you ask yourself, um, what is this uh, association doing? We are representing 280 labels. Um, in former times we said record companies. Um, today they are more media companies. They're completely changed. They are disrupted. Um, they lift what I will show you later on. And um, they are not only the big ones. Yes, I also represent the three major companies, um, but we also represent the smaller units, which all together is part of the ecosystem of music and the broader view of the creative industries. We are just next door, which was good for me to come here. <laughs> we are 14 people in an association, and our main focus usually is public affairs and communication. And we are, since we, we were exposed as industry so early to the digitalization, um, we are now, I, I wouldn't say we are the band leader in, in the discussion, but we are an example which is used a lot of times. And actually I wrote something on the Huffington Post uh, on 3D printers uh, just six months ago. And the people are asking, why are you, why are you writing on 3D printers? Um, for some of the people following our history, the, the answer is quite obvious because the deep disruption repeats in other areas. So we are also responsible for the official German charts commissioned by GFK and we are also hosting or let's say we are responsible for the Echo Awards, Echo Pop, Echo Classic and Echo Jazz which is something like the Brits or the Grammys. We are part in a very emotional debate about the digital environment, the digital agenda. And to give you an idea how emotional this is for a representative of the music industry, I just have this slide for you because then you see how much people like music or love music. The younger love it even more. This shows how much we are in a, it's not a dispute, how much we are in a broader exchange about the future of music and also about what we want to do together to make the creative industry grow and also to earn our living uh, in this environment. I guess you all, you are digital natives, you all know where we come from. It's the life after the Napster shock. I remember, funny enough, no one spoke about disruption at the time, as far as I remember. Um, it was disruption. It was something arriving in this world where few people knew what it's going to change. Some of them didn't. And now we are in a discussion about whether our industry should have changed earlier or should have known earlier or should have whatever, um, should have found a strategy earlier. But this shock actually made us the first industry really digitized and actually it is fair to say that digitalization is part of the music industry's DNA. We were first exposed and since the shock was so big at the time there was a huge discussion about how to protect our rights and that was the moment where people associated us with trying to hinder what's going on. But actually, as I see it, I wasn't responsible at the time, this was part of the shock 
this was the reaction, this was the, the idea of what do we do now and how do we change and what is going on here. And so this disruption took place and we see it in other areas, in other parts of the creative industries, but also until the automotive uh, industry, that there is no one single recipe how to react. There is no one single answer to how to change or how to adapt your business case because that is one of the old um, assumptions. You lost your business case, so you're out. Sometimes I was in discussions where people said, so how does it feel to represent an association without members? And I said, no, 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 it feels great. I have a lot, a lot of members and they are very active. Yes, but they will be gone soon. And I said, yes, then let's talk when they're gone. But they're, I guess they will never be gone because they change and they change already. So I want to confront you with the most popular assumptions which I hear in my daily business to give you then an idea of how deep the change was. Some of them you might know. Vinyl is coming back. Why am I talking about vinyl? <laughs> because you know that vinyl is a story to tell. Maybe for you also. Maybe here in Berlin there is more vinyl than, I don't know, in the southern part of Germany where I'm coming from. But nevertheless, it's something which is not, in the first view, fitting in the picture of this kind of disruption which most of the people think about. So the CD is dead. Also, of course, the CD is dead. That's what people think. We are not far away from Dusman here, so um, you might see that there are some CDs left. I will show you how many of them. The album is done. It's over. No more album. Band, no more album. Just one track, one single track to become artist, to live from this one single track. And very soon people will only be streaming their music. Yes, that's now we're talking disruption. That's the disruption people want to discuss. That's the part where people want to hear about the success story of Spotify, the success story of um, other business cases like Deezer or Simpy in Germany. That's where we change the position of how to handle our personal use of media, of films, of ebooks. And at the very end, the people are saying, but we're in a good shape again, aren't we? So everything is fine. So don't complain, Florian, if they talk to me. Um, why are you still talking about piracy? Why are you still talking about the legal framework in the internet? It's all good, isn't it? Is it? This is what happened. So you can see, this is the year 2000. That's the shock I was talking about. And the shock was even bigger. So if you just imagine how deep a shock is if an industry is within 10 years losing 40% of its turnover, then you can have an idea of what it means in the companies when people lose their jobs, when people are all searching for a strategy and are all the time hearing the same thing, which is, yes, but your business case is over. You're saying, no, we, we're still producing music. We are still investing in music. We're still investing in diversity. We're still investing in new talents and cultural diversity. But no, your business is over. And then we see, you can see it on the right side, that in 2013, so last year, for the first time, we had a slight growth. It's all good now. That's why people say so. It's all good now. It's not. But it's flat. And flat, for our industry, for the moment, feels good. This is something which I will elaborate in a deeper view, but if you already see the colors, and I told you CD is dead, then you will maybe wonder, but physical, uh, it can't be all vinyl. So if we then look at the German market, and ask ourselves, what does the consumer want? Then you see, three quarter is physical product. So disruption takes place, yes. The consumer still loves physical product. Is he a stupid consumer because he loves physical product? No. He's a German consumer, okay. 
we have other consumers around the world. We have a good situation in the German outlets. So you can, if you love physical product, you can get it, not only at Dusman next door. So this is where we say we have a quite interesting mix of products and legal offers in Germany. Where you see, you saw the stability. And here you can see the cake, how we call it. And you see that the red part of it, close to 8%, that's subscription and ad supported. So that's the streaming part. Yes, disruption is taking place. Yes, it's growing, we will see later. But this is reality. And whenever I'm discussing the disruption process of our industry, I'm always saying, do not only talk about chances and risks, talk about reality. Look at the status of our industry. Look how people work. And don't forget that this, this is the big Rocky Mountain picture, that this is our reality. This is 84. And here we are in 2013. And the red part is CD. So that's the change in the mix of products. That's the change of user demand. And I guess you cannot really see it, but this is the shock I was talking about. This is 99. This is Napster, file sharing, start. This is here. I'm not saying this is one-on-one -on -one the reaction for this, but here are CD burners. This is here. CD burner penetration in the population over 20%. I'm not saying this is the one and only reason why we saw this shock, but still, if you see the picture, then you see this is quite cruel for an industry. And you can also see this is the streaming part last year. If you then look at our German friends, you can also see the same transition process when you ask the question, where are you consuming music? First, I said we have a good sales force on the ground. That was the green part. It's melting down. So less people buy on stationary outlets. And the top boxes is online. One mistake of a lot of people. Online does not mean download or streaming. As you might know, because you're a digital native, you can also buy a CD. So this is something where you can also lose the discussion about how are you changing. Some of our companies, they're investing a lot in a good physical product, in wonderful fan editions or very, very high value packages, but it's traded online. It's not traded only in the dosmans of this world. There you see the next transition. And if you ask yourself, internet and music, I'm saying it's synonyms because the shock came together and okay, the internet was there before. I remember, I still remember, but I found this figure and we have an online population of 53 million Germans and 48 million of them are also music consumers. They're not buyers. I did not say so. But this is something where we see that, that's why I said first settlers in Neuland. Um, it comes together. And the development, that's also why broadband connectivity for us is very important. It's something good for us. We're not scared. We are not trying to hinder the whatever growth of the web or the growth of legal offers but we are all the time checking our reality. Two years ago, I stood in the German parliament and the parliamentarian said, yes, but I hear all this and I know now your problem is another problem. Your problem is that you don't have legal services in the internet. That was your fault. And that was Napster who was challenging you and that was your fault, which is not true. Yes, it was true here. And it was slow, but it's very complex. It was very difficult to develop, let's say, in the unfair concurrence with Napster, 
businesses like we saw that in Germany, Market Leader before um, iTunes Music Load from Deutsche Telekom or then iTunes. But we have today, we have more than 60 legal offers online. Some journalists are saying, oh, now I know your real problem. You have too many legal offers and the consumer is lost. <laughs> and I'm saying, okay, now I lost you because we are now establishing an enormous variety of offers with business cases which are not all alike. As you might know, also a streaming service. Some of them, they're focusing on very good sound quality. Some of them are specialized in genres. So there is a lot of choice. Choice in the legal market, choice of it's, it's like buying shoes. You, you, if, you, if you look for it, you find the shoes fitting to you and there is no excuse by saying there is nothing existing and you go to sources like the ones I don't name, so the illegal ones. And we also see that the legal use, and we are always talking about piracy or we are talking about court cases, we see that the legal use is increasing that the buyers are increasing, which is really good, which is really good news. These are the download buyers. This is, this is a good news for our business case, selling music, because all what we saw and all the discussions about enforcement of law in the internet came from the early decision to say, we don't give away our music for free. We sell music, we want music to be out there, but we want to get paid for it. So. No, there is nothing for free, the first hand. And then we see it is established. It's not established by only by cease and desist letters or court cases. It's also established because there is more awareness in the, in the public opinion. We worked on that too, I will show you later. So if we think back to the time when the question was, how do you deal with the disruption, the strategy was clear. You have to adapt. You have to find the consumer. You have to fulfill the needs of this consumer. But it's always slower than you think. It's always slower than you think because it's complex to design a new outlet system. It's complex also for concurrence to say, yes, this is one outlet we think good for our industry. This is something which you, in other industries, doesn't feel good. You decide being multiple players to have one outlet. It's also, I'm a lawyer, I told you. It's also an issue with cartel law. It's complex, it's not easy. You don't say, oh, we're here and we do this and we run. And then, in a lot of cases, there is an outsider coming and making the business. Yes, that's how it goes. But as you might know, our members never were selling music directly to the consumer. So they were not the media that tone holders. They were focusing on what they do best. They were promoting music, they were investing in music, and they were working with, the, with their partners, the musicians, the ones who are there to do what they can do, to do music. And in our days, we see that this idea of partnership changed the players changed the companies, changed a record company to become a more a modern media company and to become this partner in the digital environment to then find the different fans, consumers, people who are not yet buying the music, who not know in the different channels that this music exists. So if we then if we then ask us what are the Germans buying? Then it's rock pop. Okay, it's rock pop. No surprise here. But still, you can see that also German Schlager and classical music have a high relevance. Why am I telling you this? Because if we are saying we're selling something to the people, then it's also about the product. It's not only about the piece of plastic you're selling. We're talking also about the city. It's about the product. It's about the brand, it's about the emotional contact to the brand, and then you see that this has to be worked through and 
you also you cannot you cannot sell something against the market so you have to know that this mix I just show you showed you physical and digital exists because from the promotion strategy this is something totally different you're one company and you're covering it all now you're covering the multiple channels online you're covering the different promotion strategies this is disruption which took place so this is no news for the companies but it's still news for people out there who still think that record labels are sitting on catalog or CD manufacturing machines and making their money out of it. What I wanted you to show also is the growth rates here because in the physical market because that might be interesting for you if you look at the top is here the CD minus 1.3 percent in the last year this is for in comparison to other countries in Europe and also to the US and Japan it's a big difference because in the other countries we saw more this steps big steps sometimes and we see more fading out and it's still strong minus 1.3 is not a lot yes the cassette is dead one can say so but vinyl here you go 50 percent plus it is a niche product but a 50 percent plus in our days where we are all talking about digitalization about disruption about streaming about on-demand usage it's something which makes us think us as association of course but i'm talking about the labels and their strategy because you can see that there is a consumer who loves this sort of downshifting of going back to the old days but it's not the old consumer so you have to find a strategy to give him a little more than a vinyl so then you have the packages with the download voucher so it's coming all together and this is also disruption this is something which brings you as a digital native um, heavily engaged in the Berlin techno scene to your DJ culture with your vinyl and a download voucher. So what are you? You're a mixed user. You're not a download user. You're a mixed user. You're just a music fan. And honestly, we don't care how people consume mu music. Our mission is, now I'm talking for the association, to convince people to use legally. But if you want to pay for music, you pay for music. If you don't pay for music, yes, then you can hear, then you can listen to the radio. You can use services like YouTube or others, and then you're not paying. But there is no excuse, I just showed you, to go and look in the gray market. If you're asking yourself how much money do they spend, the Germans, the, one, the ones, it's not per capita, it's per German spending money for music, then you see 56 euro why am I telling you this because if you think about what people are paying once they're using streaming services then you see that this can have a very positive impact to the industry if you're a premium user 10 euro per month you're spending 120 euro of course the question is how are you broadening the cake overall without losing, losing the CD buyers, without losing the download population? And then the question is, who gets what from the cake? This is a hot issue, I know. In our days, you see every week, so you see another big star saying, I am believing in, uh, uh, in streaming. I'm not believing in streaming. I'm convinced that this is the future. Others say it's a ripoff. There is a discussion which has to go on but it's a question of individual strategy as well and you if you see the slices which I just showed you then you know that some of the band some of the artists there may be more focused on CD sales or on downloads so this is the individual mix if you have this wonderful individual mix of legal offers and I'm not representing the publishing companies or the live 
uh, entertainment. But then you also have the task to figure out where you as a brand, as an artist, with your fans and your potential buyers are best placed. So this means you have to make a choice to finally open yourself also. Maybe you come from the old days and you're not used to the new form of consumption. Maybe you think that your album, your concept album as a band is mistreated when it's on Spotify. But some of them, they're opening and others not. So it was the same case when iTunes entered the market. Some of them were there, some of them not. So it's highly, highly discussed. Legal consumption, I told you, is increasing. Nevertheless, five million people are using illegal platforms. So you might say, yes, five million Germans. Why is this a problem? The answer is the pressure on the digital market. I just showed you this. The CD is fading out and the digital market has to perform. You have to dry out the illegal sources course because if I just told you that eight around eight million people are legal buyers then five million people which are not using legal services they don't have to pay but they have to stay in the legal environment then you know that this is a problem this is a big problem for us because the business cases be it YouTube be it the free uh, uh, tier of Spotify and the like are relying on ads. So some of the illegal services, they're there for, that's why I said it's an unfair competition, it's a disturbed market in a way. They're hindering the further development in the sense of the consumer of even better offers, of even more tinkering of legal offers. Maybe other packages, maybe other sorts of inbound content or whatever but still it's a very tough business it's also a lot of competition between the different streaming offers for example right now we will see a lot of consolidation over the next years and therefore we as association are believing that the drying out of the illegal sources is very important I'm telling you so and when was it? Before yesterday, the Sony hack? Mm. This is the movie industry, so why should I say something? Yes, because it's not, it's not, we're not talking about the film which was stolen over there, but we are talking about also people losing their trust in the <coughs> online market. And mistrust for the legal environment is something very bad. And then you know that the big discussions about why is the movie industry now so slow? We know it. We know the discussion about Netflix coming to the German market and so on and about problems, so-called problems with territoriality where some American series are not in the German market and so on and so forth. Yes, but on the other hand, we are not, as a society, we are not standing up for a legal framework in which investments in those services can grow. So the little example of the Sony hack, which is much bigger, which is also not only covering the, our, key, our key economy, is just a small hint to how fragile the system is. And when the, when the investors and when the companies are losing their faith, we will not see this grow anymore. So what we are doing there we think that the online community needs more guidance in the frame of this wonderful web. And I, I, said, current, I said chances versus risks. I'm talking about reality. Uh, you saw the reality. And we are therefore, we developed um, a portal called Playfair.org, where we said we saw enough of this court cases of people are saying we only receive cease and desist letters. So we want to try to show the variety of the legal services, to show what we have. And therefore, we developed this seal of quality 
where we said it's in our own interest and in the interest of our partners to have this moment of orientation for the consumer, which is maybe, who is maybe not a digital native or who is a digital native but never saw that there are legal services. We did this together with bands. We did this together with most of the online players who are selling music. So here we are focusing on also on the idea of you, the consumer, should be safe that the money you're paying is going to the partners because there are also illegal services which make you pay and you might think that this is legal, but the money is going somewhere else. I don't know in which country at the moment, but um, not to the pockets of artists, publishing companies, our beloved members and others. So this is something we tried to establish and we're pretty close to have a full, full, um, full picture of Amazon is still missing, I see, yeah. But there you can also see if you, for example, on the top right, Naxos Music Library Jazz, that's what I just said, they're focused on jazz. So they found their niche and they're selling jazz music and have a real jazz environment. And they're building up communities, they're working this community and this is not only the job of the labels, but for a label today, this means promotion of in the different channels is much more difficult than it was to sell a CD. So when you're talking about a modern partnership with bands, artists, and labels, then you have to bear in mind that, yes, of course you can crowdfund your new album, of course. There's no problem with that, but still, once you want to make a step, you want to, make, want to make the next step, then most of the people decide to have a partner. And most of them want a potent partner. And artists, they're not, in this case, primarily showing, looking at the, at the, at the money trade. They're, they want to reach out to the audience. So then the labels come into place. And then it's a question about how good are you in promoting the product wonderful product, product sounds, sounds so dry, um, to find the audience. And then you have the difficulty to choose over which, be it social media, you reach your customers. You have a problem of reaching maybe the silver surfers online because you did not do so much research on that. Or you have to adapt very quickly to new phenomena in the online environment to find the very, very youngest people in the web. Not because you want to sell them something bad, but because you want to be exposed to them. This was much earlier, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, in the heydays. Do we really need this Playfair org? Yes, we need it because the population, the German population says, we're not so sure whether it's legal or not. A lot of them say. This is something which we also have to reflect and which we then bind in two strategies for reaching out and for convincing people to be positive also because when you see the big share of physical products, when I discuss with my colleagues from Japan or the US or the Nordic countries where they have more than a 50-50 share digital, then they're mostly saying, yes, you are, you Germans, you are hunters. You love to get a physical product and to keep it. But there's another side. We are also scared. We are scared to give our credit card in the web. So this, when we say, they don't know whether it's legal or not, yes, then they're also scared. Then they're maybe not pirates or illegal users or going in some gray area to get millions of songs for free, but then it's also our part to convince people that they can trust in legal services and that, that they find the real use for them. This is the website, and I was quite quick. We have 
Very good publications also available in the web. Investing in Music is an international one, which shows, and this might be especially interesting for you as well, how much the companies invest in new bands, new artists, and how this is then economically failing or not. Whether the wish to have the next star, to have the next big brand is successful or not, and how they are maybe, that's what I just said, how they are spreading their activities and how they change their DNA, how they were changed by the disruption and how they are changed by also talking about digital natives, how are they also internally changed by, for example, employing app developers, by employing people from not only from the creative industries or not only knowing how to work a creative product, but people who are more coming from the tech side because it's a combination. It's not one is good and the other is bad. It's a combination. And for us, and that's maybe a thing I'm, I'm, I'm finishing with the, last, with the last slide. It's a book I published on, on copyright law. It's not copyright for dummies, but it's more a FAQ book. And we know that copyright is very complex and we have also to explain what is behind. It's also important for you guys to know more about copyright, to see that it's not that copyright is hindering the development of new services. It's if you respect the law, then you have to find a way how to license. And the companies I'm speaking for, they are licensing, I showed you. They're heavily licensing and they want to be convinced to license their product because they believe in the variety of legal offer. What they don't like is not to be asked. And just to be confronted with something like Napster at the time, and here I'm closing, um, which is just saying, I'm doing this now and your business case is over. The business case is not over and I hope to have convinced you guys how our industry was deeply changed and disrupted and we, that we really have a digital DNA. Thank you.